Do you ever get so busy or procrastinate so much during the day that you run out of the hours to do the things that you want to do? Have you ever decided that the best way to fix this is to deny yourself sleep later on in the evening in order to provide yourself time to do those things? If the answer to those two questions is yes, then just like me, you've participated in revenge bedtime procrastination. This absolutely wild phenomenon has gained some social media attention recently. Revenge. Revenge bedtime procrastination. Revenge. Revenge bedtime to avenge bedtime procrastination. And so I thought it would be worth diving into this topic to see exactly what it is, what causes it, what the implications of it are, and how we can actually solve this problem. Hi friends, if you're new here, my name's Cameron Gibson, and on this channel, we talk about motivation, self-development, productivity, and just how to get the most out of your every single day. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. So recent studies have found that over 40% of adults have had increased trouble sleeping because of the pandemic. But it does turn out that this concept of revenge bedtime procrastination existed way before the pandemic. And generally, it's seen as a response to long and stressful work hours that leave little room for personal wants and desires at the end of the day. The basic concept is that you're taking revenge on yourself from earlier in the day, from all those things during the daytime hours that kept you so preoccupied. And instead of going to bed when you really need to, you choose to stay up a little bit later to do the things that you you want to do. Now, this delay in sleep can look a little different for each individual person. And of course, it can be dependent on what your specific daytime looks like as well. For example, if you're a mother of several little devils, maybe the goal is to kind of steal some quiet time for yourself. And even though you're exhausted from the daytime's activities, rather than just go to bed like you should, you decide to sit down, settle in, and just aimlessly scroll through Instagram for a few hours. Maybe your days are really highly structured, maybe due to your job. But once all is said and done, instead of going to bed when you should, you decide to stay up for an extra couple of hours just to cram in those few episodes of Stranger Things on the sofa. Studies have found that the activities involved in revenge bedtime procrastination are typically things that are really easy to do and things that we all enjoy. It could be swiping through your phone, it could be watching a movie, watching a TV series, catching up on a few extra chapters of your book. But whatever the activity you decide to use to take revenge on your daytime lack of personal time, the result is always still the same. Delayed sleep when you need it most. So as I've mentioned already, at its core, revenge bedtime procrastination usually results after a lack of free time during the day. Between things like work, running errands, cooking, cleaning, looking after your kids, checking in on friends, walking the dog, doing your essential daytime activities, a lot of us aren't really left for the free time to do the things for ourselves, the things that really bring us pleasure and joy. Now, despite this, it is really important to point out that research shows that those of us like me that take part in revenge bedtime procrastination do you really want to sleep? We actually do understand that we need to sleep and we want to go to bed despite forcing ourselves to stay up. Now in psychology, this behavior is known as the intention behavior gap, which is a super interesting topic, but it's for a different video completely, so we'll leave it for now. Now further to this, there's also a link in research between revenge bedtime procrastination and just general everyday procrastination. That being said, we're actually not entirely sure which way around this works. We're not sure if it's the general procrastination that carries through into the evening and makes us good at doing it before bed, or it could be the lack of sleep that you get due to revenge bedtime procrastination, which makes us more tired and makes us more likely to procrastinate during the day. So I guess you can ask yourself this. If you find yourself not getting decent sleep on a regular basis at night, consider what else you might be avoiding in your life. Are you maybe putting off sending an email or paying a bill? Maybe returning that phone call or that text message you'd be meaning to? It's very possible that all of these things could be connected. And trust me, a lot of these things really, really are relatable for me. Now, I think it goes without saying that everyone needs enough sleep and not getting enough shut eye can genuinely cause some proper problems further down the road. Missing one night's sleep here or there is not the end of the world. It just results in you being a little groggy the next day. But regularly not getting enough sleep can actually affect everything from your mental health to your immune system to your libido. Sleep deprivation has also been linked to things like heart disease and high blood pressure too. So some genuinely kind of serious things here. Lack of sleep can really affect your mental health too. It's been linked to increasing your chances of having depression and even down to really simple, basic, everyday things like just affecting the way you make decisions in a negative way. I'm actually currently researching a video on how sleep works, what it is, why it's important, and how we can get the best sleep possible. So do make sure you're subscribed to my channel so that you don't miss out on that video. 
So when I actually searched the internet on how to solve this and how to get around the idea of revenge bedtime procrastination, a lot of the advice was to do with general sleep hygiene. You know, things like going to bed at a consistent time, making sure that you don't have too much screen time before bed, things like that. And although I'm really aware that having good sleep hygiene is super important for quality of sleep and your general overall health, if you think about the cause of revenge bedtime procrastination, I don't think it's your lack of hygiene that would make it happen. By the way, when I say lack of hygiene, I mean lack of sleep hygiene hygiene, obviously not just that you're like a little bit smelly, but also if you are, then go shower. But the actual root cause of revenge bedtime procrastination is more that you just don't have enough free time to do your own stuff during the day. So with that in mind, here are a few of the best solutions that I found that I think will work to kind of get around this idea that we don't give ourselves enough time during the day to do the things we want to do. So we just put it off until the evening. Number one, put rest on your calendar. Vermees Fargo, MD, who is the medical director for the Loma Linda University Sleep Disorder Center, <laughs> That's a mouthful. Wholeheartedly recommends that you carve out some designated time in your schedule to take a break. It might seem kind of counterintuitive to build in time in your schedule to not have anything scheduled, but think of self-care like any other important task you might have to do during the day. If you're anything like me, if it's not on your calendar or your to-do list, it probably won't get done. So just stick a little reminder in there to do something for yourself. Number two is to make reasonably sized goals. Part of making sure that any habit is a habit that you can stick to is to regulate your goals and make sure that they're achievable. So if you're struggling to find time during the day or you're worried you're going to fall behind your deadlines, start really small. Start using small 10 to 15 minute breaks during the day to maybe exercise, get out and about, do something for yourself, read a chapter in your book, whatever it might be. Using small 10 to 15 minute breaks can actually make you more productive in the long run. And last but not least, include the things that matter to you the most. Fargo says that it's super important to make time for the people and things that you appreciate the most. Even if it's just calling your best friend, for five minutes during the day. Doing something that makes you feel good will make you feel like you need to do less of it in the evening when really you should be sleeping. Now occasionally, if you stay up a little bit too late, scrolling through your phone, talking to friends, watching a movie, whatever it might be, it's not the end of the world. But if you allow this to become a regular thing and you regularly put off going to bed, then not only will you feel really groggy during the day, but it can have long-term implications on your overall health, productivity, and well-being. Contrary to popular belief, it is impossible to get used to having less sleep. We're all human, we're all made of flesh and bone and blood. And simply depriving your body for everything it needs to survive, just like in any other area of life, will eventually take its toll. Now, I know just as well as anyone that we all have things that we miss out on when we have packed schedules, and I know that it totally sucks. But in my opinion, Finding time to take care of ourselves should absolutely not be one of those things that we don't have time for. Just maybe try not to do it when you're supposed to be in bed. Thanks for watching, and as always, stay awesome.